In this video, I'm going to show you how to self-host SSL enabled Anaton on a completely free cloud server. Anaton is an open source workflow automation tool that lets you connect various apps and services. If you are aware of Zapier and Make, Anaton is similar to those apps. But since it's open source, it's completely free. You can create workflows with it to automate your work. You can either run it locally on your PC or host this software on your own server and then access it from anywhere. In this video, we will be focusing on hosting it on a server. Let's get started. I have found two easiest and most reliable ways to get a free virtual machine in the cloud that you can use to host Anyten. First, Google Cloud has a free tier that provides one E2 micro instance completely for free until your usage is within the free usage limit. There is no expiry of this, but of course it may change in the future. And these are the free usage limits. You can have one E2 micro instance in one of these three regions and a maximum of 30 GB months standard persistent disk and one GB of outbound data transfer from North America to all region destinations. You can even create multiple E2 micro instances, but the total number of hours should not exceed the total number of hours in the current month. Second, Oracle Cloud Free Tier provides two AMD-based compute VMs completely for free and they have one GB of memory each. You can go to oracle.com and click on start for free. Just create your account here and it will ask you for the credit card details and it will debit $1 but it will refund it back and then you can keep using the free tier. In this video, I will create a VM in Google Cloud and set up an ETN over there. If you don't have an account on Google Cloud, you can go to cloud.google.com then click on start free. Just provide your email ID and create a free account. Once that is done, again go back to the cloud.google.com. Just click on console at the top and you'll land on this page. If you don't have any project already created, you can click at the top and click on new project and create a new project. Once that is done, search for compute engine at the top. Click on compute engine. If you're using compute engine for the first time, you'll see a button at the top that says enable. You have to click on that enable and enable the compute engine APIs. Once that is done, you'll see this page. Now to be able to use the free tier account, we need to make sure that we take care of all of these limits. Our VM should be in one of these three regions. We should use the standard persistent disk of not more than 30 GB and our outbound data transfer should not exceed 1 GB. As long as our usage lies within these limits, we will not receive any billing for this instance. Once you are on this page, you can click on create instance. Then select one of the three supported free tier regions. I will select US West 1 as mentioned here and it should be E2 micro. So I will go back, select E2 and in the machine type, I will select E2 micro. Next, I need to check the standard persistent disk. So I will scroll down to boot disk, click on change and change from balanced persistent disk to standard persistent disk and change the size to 30 GB and click on select. Now, once this is done, you will see a monthly estimate of $7. But if your usage is within the limits, this monthly billing will be waived off and you won't have to pay anything. Then you need to scroll down to firewall and select all of these three checkboxes, allow HTTP traffic, HTTPS traffic, and health checks. And click on create, and it will take a few minutes to create this VM. And you will start seeing your VM here. Next, you need to SSH into the VM. Just click on SSH button over here. Click on authorize. And you will be in. Now we need to set up a couple of things to run an 10 over here. I've created this GitHub project. You can find the link in the description. Just open it and one by one execute all the commands that you see on this page. So first we will install the Docker. Then we will start the NA10 in the Docker. Then we will install Nginx, configure Nginx. Next, we will set up SSL with certbot and that's it. Nginx and certbot are required to enable SSL on the domain. So let's execute each of these commands one by one. Next, copy this command to install the Docker. 
then start the docker and enable the docker. Next, you need to run this command to start an eaten container. You need to replace this with your domain. If you don't have your own domain and if you want to access just using the IP address, you can just put your instance public IP over here. You can find the public IP by going back to Google Cloud Console and just copy this external IP over here. So I have a Hostinger account and I have created a subdomain in my main account. All I had to do was just create a new A record and give the name of the subdomain that I want to create, an ADN, and then paste the public IP of the host. And just click on add record. So I'm back to my SSH session and here I will run the command to run my Docker container. As you can see, it has given us a container ID that it's running now. If we do a sudo docker ps, we can see the container which is running. At this point, you should be able to access your N8N by using your IP address. So I will grab my IP address from here and try to access it on another tab. So here you can see we are able to access N8N on this IP address colon 5678. Right now it's on HTTP protocol and it's not safe. Let's enable SSL on our server. So I'm back to the GitHub project and I will execute these commands to install Nginx and then configure it. For that, we will require Nginx and certbot. So Nginx will serve as a reverse proxy and it will forward the client requests to our n Docker container. And certbot is a tool from EFF that automates the process of obtaining and renewing SSL certificates. So all you need to do is just execute all of these commands one by one. This command will install the Nginx. It will create a new Nginx configuration file and you just need to paste these contents inside that file. Just make sure you change yourdomain.com with your domain. And then run this command to create a symlink and restart the Nginx. Next execute this command to install certbot and Nginx plugin and then this command to obtain the SSL certificate. Make sure you replace yourdomain.com with your domain. If you use a subdomain, then it should be the complete subdomain. Once these are done, you will be able to access any 10 using the domain on SSL. So I've replaced the IP address with the domain and now we can remove the port because Nginx will receive the traffic on 443 and it will automatically forward it to 5678 to any 10. You can see that insecure warning is gone. Now you can create your N8N account and get started from here. Now one thing to note is by default, N8N stores its data locally in .N8N directory on the server. It means it will save all of your workflows configuration locally on the server. Though 30 GB of the standard persistent disk space is good enough. If you want to use an external database, you can go to docs.n8n.io hosting installation docker then scroll down to using alternate databases and you can pick the configuration from here while running the docker run command you can pass all of your postgres related environment variables here itself and it will start saving the entire data on the given postgres database instead of locally in the previous video i showed you how to automate instagram posts using n8n if you are interested you can find the link in the description if you found this video helpful Please like, subscribe and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.